Hello everyone, welcome to VTU e Sectiona. Myself, Professor Nitin Kumar, working as an assistant professor in Department of Computer Science, BVC Mysore. So, in this video lecture, I am going to explain the program number 6 that is present in VTU a Mobile Application Development Laboratory for 6 semester CSE and IAC students. The program number 6 deals with the parser application. I guess you know what is parser that is going to parse the given information and uh, uh, to get the results. Okay. So, here we are not going to develop any parser to parse the complex thing. So, prerequisite for this what, what we are going to parse in this parser application is we are going to parse two files which one is one is XML file other one is JSON file. What is this XML file and JSON file? XML means extended markup language, JSON means JavaScript object notation. So, you need to firstly you need to create two files by name city.xml and city.json. I will show how to create this while developing the application. Firstly, you need to create two files by name city.xml and city.json. These two files should be placed inside assets, inside assets. So, the two files will contain information of two cities such as Mysore, Mandya, Bangalore and uh, Kolar. So, such as the information consisting of temperature, humidity, longitude, latitude. Okay. So, the information which is present in the form of XML and JSON should be parsed and should be displayed in the text view. That is the outcome of this parser application. The application is simple. You are going to develop a simple parser. In the, and in the form of Android application, where you are going to pass two files such as city XML and city JSON. So, which is having the city's information, two cities information. You have to pass the name, temperature, humidity, longitude and latitude and you have to display that in the text view. That is the outcome of this particular parser application. Okay. So, the prerequisite for this parser application means you have to place those two files inside the, inside the assets folder. I will show how to place it while developing this particular application. So, coming to the design, the design is very much simple than the other applications which that I have discussed till now. So, firstly I am going to give the title, the title is parser application. Okay, parser application. So, and I am going to use two buttons here. One is XML, other one is JSON. And I am going to use a text view here. And I am going to use a text view here. Please observe. So, whenever I click on this XML parser, XML button, the XML file should be parsed and the result of the two cities should be displayed as output in this text view, such as name, temperature, humidity and longitude and latitude. Well. Whenever I press, uh, click on this JSON, JavaScript object notation button, so that this particular JSON file should be parsed and those two cities results should be displayed in this particular text view. Okay. Coming to the layout that we are going to prefer for this particular application development is, I am going to use the relative layout. So, I need two text views. How many text views are required? Two text views are required and I need two buttons. Okay. It is a simple application, but the, you must know, firstly you must have two files with the name city.xml and city.json with the information of our two cities such as name, temperature, humidity, longitude and latitude. Then the design is very simple. This is for the displaying the title of the application. These two buttons are the to trigger the methods that we are going to use to parse the XML as well as JSON. This text view is responsible for displaying the results and these two files city.xml and city.json should be placed inside the assets folder. 
So let's start the development. Now I will show you how to develop the parser application with hands-on experience. So now I'm going to create a new project. So I'm going to select the empty activity and I will give the application name as parser application. And I'm going to select the language as Java and finish. So the main theme of this parser application is to develop a parser to pass two external assets that we are going to use in this program. One is XML, other one is JSON. XML means external markup language. JSON means JavaScript object notation. So before you start with this particular project, this particular application, firstly you need to create two external files. One is from the XML, other one is from JSON. So until this project gets built, I will explain the JSON and XML file. Just observe, I have created two projects, two files here. First one is city.xml. So firstly, I have mentioned the version. So please observe here, I have kept two records of two cities. So please observe. So record opening tag and the record closing tag. So firstly, I have placed the place information such as name, latitude, longitude, temperature and humidity. And please remember one thing with respect to this uh, external files, whatever the tag that you are going to give such as place, name, latitude, longitude and temperature, you should follow the same naming convention in your program. Like this I have created the file XML file for two places. The first place is on Mysore and the second place is Bangalore. So those two uh, places information is enclosed within the record stack. And initially I have mentioned the version of XML. Okay, this is the prerequisite that you have to create with respect to city.xml file which holds the address of, which holds the details of two cities. Similarly, I have created the uh, uh, details of two cities using JSON file. JavaScript object notation. So the JavaScript object notation will be placed within the large braces. Okay. And the information, every individual information will be placed within the flower braces followed via uh, the two informations will be separated by comma. So this is the information about the city Asan. Next about the city Mandya. So whatever the information that you are going to pay, whatever the attribute that you are going to place inside that information should be enclosed within the double quotes followed by colon and the value should be enclosed within the double quotes. Just observe the same values I have used here. Name, same attributes, name, latitude, longitude, temperature and humidity of the city Asan. So this is the first place information that I am placing in the JSON file. Similarly, I am creating the uh, second place information. The city name is Mandya, latitude is 12.9, longitude is 77.5, temperature is 25 and humidity is 74%. So like this, you have to place the two in cities information within the large braces that will make the JSON file. So this is the pre prerequisite that you must have. So you must create before you start with the program number six parser. Just whatever we, what we are going to do here is we are going to pa parse this place information based on the attributes such as name, latitude, longitude, temperature and humidity and we are going to display the values associated with those attributes. That's the aim, that's the context of this particular application which I'm going to develop. Okay, so firstly you need to create two files. One is JSON file, other one is XML file in this format. It, it may consist of one, two, three, it's left to you. You might have that many cities information here. And please remember as I mentioned earlier, you must place the name either in uppercase or in lowercase. Why? Because we are going to use the same in your program. If anything goes wrong, if you, if you have placed latitude completely here and if you are referring lat in your program, you cannot see the output. Okay, so if you are not getting the output means the first thing that you have to check in this program is what's the attribute name that we have given and what we have referred in our program. Clear? This is the prerequisite that you must create before you uh, start uh, 
uh, developing the program number six that is nothing but parser application okay so i guess uh, my project may be ready as of now okay it's ready okay it's a simple project it, the design of this particular project is very simple just i will go with the design first so my project is ready the application is parser application so first i will go with the design okay so i have so the components that i'm going to use in this design which i have explained uh, on the board is firstly i'm going to give the title the title of the application is i will change the text of this particular title which is already available i will change the title that is parser application and i will change the size so this is the title that i'm going to give for my application the application name is parser application so next i'm going to add two buttons here so whenever i click on this first button uh, so the parser of the parser should parse the xml file whenever i click on the second button it should pass the json file so i will go with the constraint layout itself there is no need of using the relative layout why because we are working with only four components so i will need change the text the text name is parse xml similarly i am going to add another button here so i will change the text i will make it parse JSON. So next, I need to add a text view. Why? Because whatever we have passed, either it may be XML or it may be JSON, the result will be displayed in the text view. So that I will add a text view. This is the result displaying text view. And I will just observe you. I will drag and I will increase the size of this text view. Why? Because there must be sufficient space to display the information of past value. Okay. Just I will uh, place it to the corner and I will drag and I will increase the size of the text view. Why? Because the information that we are going to pass should be displayed here. So, but if I guess you can observe, there is a value present here. The value is text view. I, we need to make it null. We need to make it null that we have done in the previous as we have done in the previous program. So I will go to the code part of the design. I will go to the code part where I will go. I'm going to search for the result displaying text view and I will make the text value to null. So once it is null, once it is null, I will change the ID also. Here I'm going to use the ID display. The ID that I'm going to use here is display. So from here onwards, if I refer display means that's nothing but the text view, which is going to give the result. Okay. This is my design requirement. It's a, the simple design is very much simple. Just observe uh, when, once you create a project, there will be text view, rename the text view as a parser application. Then you're going to add two buttons. The first button name is parse XML. Second button name is parse JSON. The second button name is parse JSON. Okay. So whenever you click on this parse XML, the whatever the city information that is present in the XML document should be displayed as a result in this text view. Whenever you click on this parse JSON, whatever whichever the city information that is present in the JSON file should be passed and displayed in this this uh, result giving text view. Okay, so as we once after that, I'm going to add a text view for the result purpose and I'm going to place it in the pro proper position and I'm going to increase the size by placing the cursor towards the corner and I'm going to change the ID to display and I'm going to make the value associated with this text view to null. So this is the prerequisite that you have. This is the, this is the design that we have to make. Okay. Once after creating the design. So once after creating the design as well as the two XML as well as the JSON file, the next step is to create the asset folder. So how to create the asset folder? It's a simple procedure. Just observe. Click on app new so where you can observe a name called folder 
so a set folder so i will explain it once again app new folder where you will select the asset folder okay so asset folder and it will ask for the creation change the folder location don't select anything just finish click on finish it will leads to creation of a new folder by name asset just observe it's now available here assets folder so now i need to place the two files which i have created such as city.json and city.xml file inside this asset folder how to place those two folders here just click on it and create a new xml the file that i'm going to create is xml file okay r create new file okay so what's the file name that i'm going to give the file name that i'm going to give you is just simple please observe i'll show it once again assets right click new file the file name that i'm going to provide is ct dot xml ct dot xml similarly i'm going to create another one file by name new file ct dot json okay so can you please observe your i have created two files one is city.json another one is city.xml now i need to add the values to these files i need to copy down the content just observe whatever the file that i have created previously from there i am going to copy down the content firstly i am copying the xml control c and place it in the city.xml that you have created now that is this one okay just i have copied down and placed the uh, xml values from the xml similarly you have to copy down the text that is present in the json file control c and place it in the json file which you have created in the assets folder that is city.json and place it here that's it okay so this is the prerequisite that you have to do before you start with the java firstly you have to create the design like this next you have to place the contents of xml inside this asset folder inside the city.xml file just copy and paste it similarly you have to paste it the json file okay so once of that you can close this part two files why because we are not going to manually refer those two files we are going to refer in it in the java part okay just observe along with the in the java folder firstly you are going to how to create the asset folder app new folder and you are going to select the assets folder once after selecting creating the asset folder click on assets new and file create a file by name city.xml city.json from here onwards i am going to refer the files that we have created such as city.json and city.xml by name city okay so now i will start with the java part so as i mentioned earlier the only one component that i am going to refer in my code to display the result is text view so that i am going to declare as a global variable here it's a text view and the reference that i'm going to use here onwards is display so now i need to identify it as i mentioned earlier you have to identify it once after immediately the set content view that is display is equal to find view by id the id is what's the id that we have given that is display we have changed the id to display right so we are done with the identification of the text view which gives the results okay so next i'm going to write two independent methods here public void parse xml and i need to provide the view so i have written a method by name parse xml similarly i will return the method by name
पार्स जीस सो वी आर डन विथ द क्रिएशन ऑफ टू मेथड्स नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू प्लेस द लॉजिक टू पार्स द एक्स एम एल फाइल विद इन दिस फ्लोवर ब्रेस आई एम गोइंग टू प्लेस द लॉजिक टू पार्स द जेस एंड फाइल विद इन दिस टू फ्लोवर ब्रेसेस ओके सो वंस आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग द लॉजिक आई एम गोइंग टू प्लेस दीज टू मेथड्स नेम इन साइड दोज टू पर्टिकुलर मेथड्स इन साइड इन साइड दोज टू पर्टिकुलर बटन यूजिंग ऑन क्लिक सो लेट स्टार्ट द पार्सिंग द JSON file, XML file first. So firstly, I will place the logic inside the try catch block. As we are parsing the external file that is assets file city dot XML. If anything goes wrong, if it's not possible to parse the content that is available in the XML file, it should throw a exception. That's why I'm going to place it in the try catch block. Try. Okay, don't worry about the error. Why? Because once you place the catch block, it will automatically go. Try. so i am going to open the xml file by using input stream and i am going to give the references is it is present in get assets dot open the file name is or the file name that we have given city dot xml so don't worry about the errors that you are going to get until the completion of this particular application so just a simple thing i'm going to call a input stream so the reference that i'm going to give is is so from the assets open the file city.xml okay so next i'm going to call three components here just remember firstly i will call document build factory next the document builder followed by document so document build factory consist of document builder so document builder consist of document once after that i'm going to call the string builder so using that string builder i'm going to parse the information that is present in that particular document which we have given in the form of xml file so firstly i will call the document build factory document build factory you can give any reference here i'm giving the one which we have, which is appearing in the using intellisense i am creating a new instance of document builder factory just observe i am creating a new instance of document builder factory once after creating the new instance now as i mentioned earlier the document builder will be present inside this document build factory document builder is equal to document builder factory new document builder okay so i'm done with the calling of document builder which is present inside the document build factory i'm calling a new document builder so once after that i will call the document which is present inside the document builder document which is nothing but document builder dot parse the file reference is is the file references as we declared earlier the file references is input stream the reference that we have given so now we are done with the declaring the input stream and declaring and creating a new instance of document build factory and document builder and calling the document on the input file which is present in the asset folder okay so the next one is so whatever the value that is present in that document should be parsed and should be displayed by using the string builder so i will create a instance of string builder here i will call the instance here string builder is equal to new string builder okay so firstly so i will use a method by name append so whatever i am going to parse will be appended in my text view so how to append i will going to i'm going to call that method append on the string builder string builder dot append so firstly i'm going to display the title which kind of data that i'm going to display here that is xml data 
so next string builder dot append I will draw a line here slash n in new line I will draw a line like this just to indicate it like a separator that's it nothing more than that okay so next as every individual data every individual attribute and its value that is present in the XML will be referred by in the form of nodes based on the tag so I will call the node list here node list so because every individual data that is present in the document will be referred by the tag name so the tag name is place so that's why I told you to use the either uppercase or lowercase letters why because if anything goes wrong if you are using combination of two words means you have to use the same in this ma in the same manner in your java part otherwise it leads to it will, it will throw an exception that is uh, the, cannot, the given xml file cannot be passed which we are going to place in the catch block so once you create the node list which will pass the data based on the tag the tag name is place now i am going to call a for loop simple for loop so we are going to use it in a normal way simple for loop so where it will pass based on the length for int i is equal to 0 from 0th position node i less than i less than node list means the list of nodes based on the length by changing the i means it will parse the how many places information are there so for that I am going to create a for loop it starts from uh, 0 till the node li get the node li list length and it will keep on incrementing so for th this for loop will execute for two times why because two places information are there in my xml file so if you have three it will execute for three times So inside this for loop, I will place the logic to uh, display the information of every individual value that is present inside this place tag. Okay, so we are done with the creation of node list. So I'm going to call the node here, node. What is that node? It's nothing but what's the item that is present in ith location as per my for loop. Okay, if, if node dot get node type is equal to, so if the node that you are parsing, if the node that you are parsing is of element node, is of element node, then the logic will execute which you are going to place inside this if flow. If it is of another type, any other type means it will not execute. If the node that the node that you are going to parse, it's, it's, if it's of a element node means, so I am going to create a element value here. So I will call that element element instance and I am going to print the, print it in the string. Element reference is equal to the element node that we are parsing okay so now I'm going to call the values one by one just observe I will open the uh, XML file we are done with the parsing this place now I need to print the values which are present here one by one. Firstly, I'm going to print the name, latitude, latitude, temperature, and humidity. These are the five information that I'm going to you print. I'm going to display it in my text view by using string append. String append is a method that comes under string builder okay slash n the first thing that I'm going to display here is name name 
so that i am appending that i am appending it's a value get value get value so don't worry it will show error why because we have not written the method for value get the value so what's the tag that is name in the lower case letter the first tag that i'm first value that i'm going to display here is name so which is present in that element okay so next as i mentioned earlier the next value that that i'm going to display here is latitude in place of name i'm going to mention latitude so you have to cross check what's the tag that you have used so that you have to mention here in my xml file i have used lat that i am mentioning here so same thing should be mentioned otherwise so your file will not be passed similarly here we will mention longitude longitude so the name that i have used in my file is l o n g long so the next one is temperature so for the temperature i have used the whole name by using in lower case letter temperature so just cross check the spellings don't worry about this thing it's just a uh, title that i'm displaying okay so it will not introduce any problem while passing your file just worry about this values you have to use the same name which we have given in the xml file okay so the last one that is humidity humidity so humidity also given completely in lower case letter humidity okay just cross check the spelling why because if anything goes wrong if there is any thing wrong out of this five uh, values that you have given so your file will not be passed so finally after completion of this i am going to append the line which we have app appended in the beginning i will append the same line okay so once after this once the for loop ends okay so i will call display display dot set text set text string builder why because whatever we have passed that is in the form of xml file that should be converted to string and that should be displayed in the display okay why because Uh, whatever we have passed that should be that will be in the form of string why because we are using the string builder but to display that in the text view it should be converted to text that i am calling here so display is nothing but the name of the text view which is responsible for giving the result the method that i am calling here is set text so whatever we have passed in the string builder so that string sh should be set as a text in the result giving display by name display okay so the next one once of this so this is not the end so we need catch block so we are done with try so this brace so please observe your this brace indicates the closing of try block so if anything goes wrong in your try block the catch block should trigger right so we have to place it place the logic in the form of try catch block so that i am going to place the catch block here catch so i will call the exception e which kind of exception is possible here print st stack trace why because while uh, stacking while uh, tracing the uh, elements which are present in the xml if anything goes wrong this particular uh, exception will be triggered and we have to print the toast message what's the toast message that i'm going to print here is just i'm going to display the user this error in parsing 
XML. Just a simple message error in parsing the XML. Toast dot length long dot show. That's it. Okay, it's a simple method. Just the thing is, uh, this is the one of the biggest program that is present, lengthiest program that is present in your syllabus. But the logic that we are going to use here is very much simple here. Please observe. Firstly, we are going to do the, we are going to create two external files. One is XML, other one is JSON. So next, we are going to design. Design is very simple. Just we are going to add a uh, title of my application, two buttons, parse XML and parse JSON. Next, I'm going to add a text view. In the text view, I'm going to increase the size of text view and I'm going to remove the value that is there and I'm going to make it null and I'm going to add, a, I'm going to customize the ID. I'm going to add the ID display. So once after that, I'm going to recognize my uh, text view, which is responsible for displaying the result. So then I'm going to create two methods by the method by name parse XML, other one is by name parse JSON. So the logic that I'm going to place it will be in the try catch block. In try block, I'm going to create an input stream where I'm going to parse the uh, assets folder for the city.xml file. So then I will call document build factory, then document builder from the documenter build factory. Then I will create a document which in which I'm going to parse the input stream. So once after that, I'm going to create a component. I'm going to create an instance of string builder. So firstly, I will display the data that we are parsing here. That is XML data. Then there a new line followed by. So every individual tag that is present in the XML data will be parsed in the form of node or element. Okay. So for that, I need a node list. I will create the node list means this, this node list will indicate how many place tags, how many places data that your XML file will have. Then I'm going to make use of a simple for loop. Okay, based on that node list. So I'm going to create a node and I'm going to check whether that node is of element type and I'm going to create an instance of element and I'm going to parse the values such as what is there in the place of name, lat, longitude, temperature and humidity. Once after that, so inside and I'm going to set the, those values in the text box. That is nothing but text view. So if anything goes wrong inside the catch block, I'm going to place a message that is error in parsing the XML data. So this completes the XML parsing, but I have not written the value for method for private method for get value that I'm going to write it in the end. Okay, so now I will start with the parsing the JSON file. So firstly, I will create a JSON string JSON. Okay, I'm going to create a string by name JSON. So even we need the string builder here. Why? Because we are going to append the values which are there in the JSON file once again using the string builder itself. So I'm going to call that string builder object here. String builder is equal to new string builder so now as i mentioned earlier with respect to this xml file parsing what we have placed in the similar manner i'm going to place the try catch block here firstly i will place the try block finally i will add the catch block so i will call the input stream so same get assets dot open the file name is city.json don't use the combination of uppercase and lowercase letters it's better to go with the lowercase itself so next i will call the int size i need to know the size of the input file that is city.json file that's why int is is equal to is dot sorry int size is equal to is dot available okay don't worry about these errors once you place the catch block it will automatically go okay so next i need to call the byte why well, because i need to allocate uh, that particular buffer for the size that we are reading right now the size of that input stream so that's why i will call the byte byte 
as a buffer is equal to a new byte which is equal to the size that we have calculated in the previous step okay so next I will read is dot read what we have called as a buffer it's nothing but byte the reference that we have given for the byte is buffer that I am creating here so next so we are we are going to use two components one is uh, firstly I am going to provide the encoding uh, scheme that is nothing but UTF-8 followed by I am going to create the JSON array why because in place previously with respect to the XML file we have worked with respect uh, firstly we have created document builder factory next document builder and followed by document here we are going to create the JSON array and JSON object JSON array is equal to new new JSON array the references the give string that we have given previously that is JSON so before we start with this firstly we need to give the JSON that is JSON is nothing but the new string the new string which is there in the buffer which we have created and we have to provide the standard encoding format standard standard character sets that is UTF-8 we are going to use encoding scheme okay so next So we are getting error in JSON array, it's nothing but it's showing this error because of the try catch block. Don't worry, once you place the catch block, it will automatically go. So now firstly, I'm going to append the data how we have appended in the previous XML just to indicate the uh, type of file that we are parsing. String builder dot append. I will append the data that is JSON data. Okay, next I will append a new line okay just how we have appended after the mentioning the type of data that we are going to read here so similarly how we have run a for loop here we also run the for loop uh, inside that for loop uh, we are going to place the string builder as well as the json object for int i is equal to zero means it starts from the first place json json array dot the length means till the lot last object by incrementing the high value it will pass so next so we are done with the creation of json array but whatever the components that comes under the json array will be treated as json object that we are going to create here json object is equal to json array dot get that json object and you have to provide i here index what's the object that is present in the first place that is nothing but the place number one which is there in the json object that is asan so this thing will execute for asan first followed by monday okay so now i'm going to call the string builder one by one that is string builder so firstly we will check with the json object here json values what's there in the json file city dot json so firstly we have name we have to use the same conventions here latitude longitude temperature and humidity okay string builder dot append slash n first level give the name so what we are appending here we are appending the json object json object dot 
get string so the name that we are going to use is name in the lower case letter okay so i will copy the same why because you are going to replace the names that's it control v in place of name next we are going to place the latitude that is nothing but lat which we have used in our json file next we are going to use longitude that is nothing but l o n g so if you have used lower case letter follow the lower case letter if you have used upper case letter follow the upper case letter so don't worry about this name it's just a string so you must worry about this name which you are going to give it should be same as what's there in your json file so last temperature i have we have given the same but in lower case letter so humidity we have used the same in the json file with lower case so finally i will draw another one line that indicates that the end of first place okay so next after this closing tag okay after this once the for loop gets closed i will set the display display dot same thing which we have used in the previous method set text uh, i will call the string builder to string okay so and i will close the file that is is dot close okay so now i am getting errors in this particular just json object get string and close why because we have not placed the catch block that i am going to place here catch exception e the which kind of exception that we are going to get here that is print stack trace and i will make a toast message toast dot make text this the message is error in parsing json next i will display the length long dot show that's it okay so once you are done with this so please observe so there is no error present with respect to json file we are done with the parsing the json file completely so but we are left out with one another method which we have left out in the previous parsing of xml file that is get value okay what is that get value why because we are going to get the value that is present in the xml file based on the based on the tag right for that I'm, we need to write the method that is private string get value so based on what string based on the tag as well as element so what it's going to return return it will return for what's the value that you are going to it's going to return it based on the what's the value that is present in that element tag what's the the values present in that element based on the tag name from the item at the index 0 get the child nodes means from the place get the child nodes associated with that place starting from item 0 get its node value that's it. so how the get value is going to work first get the tag element by tag means place which is present at index will be obtained so next the values attributes which are there in that place will be start from the index 0 return its node value so this is the private method which is applicable for only this particular activity so get value is required for the 
while parsing the XML file. While the why because the parsing will happen based on the tag. Okay, so please observe. I'm going to explain the whole logic once again. It's a simple one. So with respect to parsing the XML, we are going to use the three components here. One is firstly the build factory, next the builder, followed by the document. You are going to create a. You are going to call the string builder. Firstly, you are going to display the XML data as a title followed by a name. So as we are working with the tag that contains a list of nodes, we are going to call the node list and we are going to run a for loop where every individual value will be assigned, will be treated in the form of single load node. And the node, we need to check whether it's an element node or not. So once after that, we are going to append the values such as name, latitude, longitude and temperature. So if, in, if anything goes wrong, this catch block will be executed. Similarly in the JSON, while parsing the JSON, so firstly I will create a file and I will place it in the assets and that will be referred by using the input stream. So I, will, I need to get the size of that file. Once after that, I need to call the buffer. Why? Because we need to encode it. The encoding scheme that we are going to use here is UTF-8. Then we are going to call the JSON array which contains the JSON object. So we will call the string builder as we have done in the previous XML and we are going to append the type of data as well as the new line. So we are going to call, we are going to append the, by using a simple for loop of the JSON array, we are going to call the name, latitude, longitude and temperature. So finally, if anything goes wrong, whatever we have placed in the catch block will be executed. Is that clear? So this private method get value is required for parsing the string XML. Okay. So now we have written two independent methods. These two independent methods should be placed inside the design part. How to place it? Go to the code part of the design. So go and search for the buttons. So this button is responsible for what? Parsing the XML file. I'm going to place the method here. On click parse XML. So this button is responsible for parsing the JSON. I'm going to place a on click attribute and I'm going to place the method by name parse JSON. So this completes your program number six. It's a simple program just so you will uh, when, whenever you see this program, you will feel difficult will be based on the length of this program. But the logic is very simple. Just you're going to make use of for loop and you're going to parse the things which are present in that JSON file or XML file by using the suitable components. So in, while parsing the XML file, you're going to use document build factory, document builder and document. While parsing the JSON file, you're going to use JSON, ob, uh, JSON uh, array followed by JSON object. So those things will be placed inside the for loop. So if anything goes wrong while parsing, the uh, error message will be displayed inside the, uh, will be placed inside the catch block. So to display what's, what went wrong. So now I will execute this application. The design is also very simple. Just the things, the, uh, the components that you are going to use in the design is two buttons, uh, one text view for title purpose and other one is uh, mm -hmm. one uh, other text view for to display the information. The design is also very simple. Just the thing is, uh, mm, you have to make sure that uh, you, have, you will create the JSON file as well as XML file correctly. That's the primary thing and you have to note down the tags or the names that you are going to give for the attributes. Why? Because if you have given something in there and if you, have, if you refer by using, for example, if you give the name in uppercase letter in a J, uh, file and if you refer it in lowercase letter, it will not show, you will not get the output. So even with respect to output, if you if you if you are not getting the output proper output means the first thing that you have to check is what's the name that you have given in the asset file and what's the name that I'm referring in my program. That's the thing that you have to cross check. And based on the your output, you have to change the size of the text view that is result giving text view. Why? Because the size of the result giving text view. Uh, may mislocate while uh, uh, seeing in the output. So it's better. So primarily adjust the text view 
but uh, it doesn't mean that your output will be present in the same pattern so my get application is getting installed this is the one of complex program that is present in your syllabus but uh, still you can easily develop this application hardly you need to spend one hour to complete this task so my application is ready so now i will click on parse xml so it must display the information about mysore and bangalore is it visible just have clicked the information parse xml the xml data the name is mysore its longitude latitude temperature and humidity similarly the name is bangalore latitude longitude temperature and humidity if i click on this json file it should display the information about asan as well as mandya just observe the data is json data the name is asan longitude latitude temperature humidity the name is mandya longitude latitude temperature and humidity so if you click on parse xml it will display the details of two cities which are placed inside the xml data city.xml so if you click on json it will display the information of two cities which are placed inside the json data json file this completes the program number 6 parser application